tonight, in the next few moments, I want your full attention. I want to talk to you on a subject entitled Keepers of the Flame. Keepers of the Flame. Before you see it, give your neighbor a high five. Tell him I'm glad I sat next to you tonight. Go ahead and be seated. You can go ahead and take your seat. I've never preached this message before. It's the first time I'm ever going to preach this message. I believe that God has a message for you tonight. I want to start out by telling you a story. Three men died and stood at the pearly gates waiting to get into heaven. And the first man said to Peter, he says, I was a preacher of the gospel serving faithfully for 30 years. And Peter, who stands at the gates of heaven, said, stand to the side for consideration. The second man stepped up and said, I was a faithful church leader since I was a youth and I remained a pillar in the church my whole life. Peter looked at him and said, stand to the side for consideration. Then a third man stepped up to Peter and he said, I was a movie producer. I made horror films. And he gave Peter his card. And he told him, check out my YouTube page. And Peter said, step right in to your reward in heaven. Right when they were about to cross into heaven, the preacher and the leaders interjected and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why does he get to go in before us? We were leaders in God's church. And Peter said, this man scared the devil out of more people than you two guys did in a lifetime. You know what I believe this weekend? Is God wants leaders who are going to make an impact in people's lives. God wants to raise up leaders in this third wave that are going to make an impact and recognize that in order to make an impact, it's only the fire of God that makes an impact. It's when a leader has been filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered with fire. See, it's important for a leader to have fire because we cannot give to people what we do not have for ourselves. And the purpose of fire, I want you to say strong, say fire. The purpose of fire is to change the hearts of men. The reason God gives us fire is so that hearts would be changed and transformed. And gang, I want to tell you something tonight where there's no fire, there's no changing of the heart. Where there's no fire in our preaching, where there's no fire in our prayer life, where there's no fire in our worship, where there's no fire in our gang services. Hearts cannot be changed and transformed for God. John Wesley, the founder of the great Methodist, said, My fear is not that our great movement known as the Methodist will eventually cease to exist from the earth. Listen to this. My fear is that our people will become content to live without the fire, to live without the power the excitement, watch this, and the supernatural element that makes our movement so great. And how many know Victory Outreach, when we, as we get ready to pass this baton to you, we're passing you a baton that has been ignited by fire. Okay, I'm going to take it back then. You can't have it. I'll say it again. As we get ready to pass you this baton, we are passing you a baton that has been ignited by holy fire. See, Paul is telling Timothy, his son, about the fire of God in his life. He tells him in the New International Version to fan into flame the gift of God that was put inside of you, that was put inside of you when I laid my hands on you. When I transferred what was inside of me to you, when Paul transferred the calling to his son Timothy, he didn't transfer him a dry calling. He didn't transfer him a title. He didn't give him a position in the church. 
He didn't tell him just stand there and be faithful. No, when he laid hands on him, he transferred the anointing of the spirit of the living God into him. And what this young leader experienced is what every young leader experiences when the, the devil tries to steal your fire. So Paul had to stir up his disciple. That's what I'm going to do in this message tonight. I don't know what you've been going through, what you've been facing, but I'm here to stir you up. I'm here to stir you up tonight. And he had to stir him up. He stirred him up in fire because Paul understood the importance of the fire of God in a young leader's life. Do you understand the importance of that fire? The importance of the fire of God. Paul wanted Timothy to know, listen, God has always used fire. God has always used fire. He likes fire. You like to get lit, God likes it lit too. <laughs> Paul is telling Timothy, God has used fire over and over again. He, he wants us to know tonight that he led his people in the wilderness by a pillar of fire. God also in the Old Testament required fire for worship. He commanded Abraham to set a fire on the altar to prepare the sacrifice, which was pleasing to the Lord as an act of worship. When they built the tabernacle, when they pitched the great tabernacle tent, the Lord commanded the Levites to build an altar with fire on it. And this fire could never be quenched. He told the Levites, the priests, who are the priests, the Levites, he's talking to the leaders. Are there any leaders here tonight? He's talking to the leaders and he's telling them this fire that you light on this altar can never go out. It can never go out. You might be sleeping, but it can never go out. That means they had to put a position, a leader by the fire all day and all night. While you're sleeping, a leader's at his post, keeping the fire burning feeding the fire people are resting in israel feeding the fire someone's job was always to feed the fire leader that's your job your job is to never let the fire die your job is to keep feeding that fire keep feeding that fire keep feeding that fire feed the fire feed the fire feed the fire it's a lot of work to feed a fire say amen but the reason he wanted this fire burning at all times is because he wanted the nations to know the, 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 the pagan nations to know, the unbelieving nations to know that God was not dead. That God was not dead. That God was alive and well. That God was still bringing the victory to his people. That God was still doing miracles. That God was still breaking people free from chains. That God was still healing the sick. That God was still raising up leaders. They say, oh, God is dead. The church is dead. The youth ministry is dead. No, nah, not in Victory Outreach. The fire is still burning. The fire is still burning. He wanted everyone to know that there was a power in Israel. We've got to let everybody know out there that there's a fire. There's a power in Victory Outreach. The fire is power. Tell your neighbor, the fire is power. God loves fire. That's why Elijah, the prophet, commanded the fire to fall from heaven to overpower the prophets of Baal. And then he killed those prophets with the sword. He wanted these devil worshipers, these evil witches, these evil witch doctors, these opposing forces to know that God's power was greater than any power in the earth. So my question is, do you know that? Sounds like 10 of you do. But do you know that God's power is greater than drugs? Do you know that God's power is greater than alcohol? Do you know that God's power is greater than sex? Do you know God's power is greater than money? There's no power greater than the power of God. And we need a wave to rise up. I'll say it again. We need a wave to rise up that has been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you the world's power, the world's fire, strange fire, 
satisfies for a moment's time. But God's fire continually satisfies a leader's life. I've been in the ministry a long time. I've been leading since about 19 years old. And one thing I have learned is that I can't do it without the fire of God. I've never had to backslide. I've never had to go back to the world. I haven't been perfect. But I've always stayed in the house of God. Not only in the good seasons, but in the tough seasons as well. And as a leader, after 25 years of ministry, I'm here to just share this with you tonight. Get personal. Can I get personal? You say, Pastor, what's the secret of your success? Why are you and Sister Georgina still here? I'll tell you why. Because we always protected the fire of God in our life, the fire of God in our calling, the fire of God in our ministry, and now the fire of God in our church. What do you feel in this place? That's not emotion. That's fire. That's not good lights and good music. That's fire. That's not entertainment. That's fire. Come on, somebody. And we need a generation that understands the power of God and the power of fire in their leadership. The fire will keep you going. The fire will keep you moving. What am I here to tell you tonight, leader? God wants to put some fire in your walk. He wants to put some fire in your walk. He wants to put a skip in your step. He wants to put some fire in your messages and some fire in your prayer life. And when you get down to pray, he wants to invade your space with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want a visitation. He wants a habitation. He doesn't want to visit you. He wants to dwell with you. Come on, somebody. He wants to step into your house, step into your bedroom, step in your car, wherever you may go. He wants to fill that place with his power and his anointing. Because if you really want to lead the wave, you need the fire of God. This is such a necessary message. Maybe not for you, but maybe for some of the young people you lead. Maybe for the young people you gather with every, every week. Because this generation, they're under attack. And they're under attack because the enemy of their soul, Satan, is trying to quiet down their fire. He's trying to dumb, dumb them down. Doesn't want them to be a witness in school. Doesn't want them to seek the Lord at home. He wants to just dumb them down. He wants to dull their senses. He wants to desensitize their passions. He wants to divert their focus. Satan wants to dumb down this generation. And you know what he's doing it through? He's doing it through social media. This generation is addicted to their phone. And through social media, he's raising a generation of man-pleasers. Do you like my selfie? Hold on, I don't, that's not my angle. Let me take another one. <laughs> take a third one. Take a tenth one. Hold on, let me put on some makeup. Girl, who are you trying to impress? Are you advertising? What are you doing? You trying to find somebody? What's going on in you? You don't need a better selfie. You need the fire of God. You need the fire of the Holy Ghost. You, you, you got to stop worrying about man and start worrying about God. Don't impress man, impress God. Don't try to please man, but be a generation that pleases God so that the fire of the Holy Ghost could fall on you and sustain you. See, we need a generation of God pleasers. See, for a fire to burn, it needs three elements. Write these things down. A fire needs heat created by friction, oxygen that breathes on the heat, and, and a fire needs fuel. The fire needs fuel. In, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, when the 120 disciples received the Holy Spirit in that upper room, they, they received fire from heaven. The Bible says it was as they spoke in tongues of fire. How many have read the Bible? As they were filled, then they began to speak as if tongues of fire. If you look at old paintings, old paintings, and if you go to Europe and look at old paintings of the upper room, they would paint a little fire over the head of the disciples. Come on, somebody. A little, a little fire. You ever see someone with a halo? That doesn't mean holiness. That means fire. Come on, somebody. See, now we have these little images emojis and little images little dots to put in our location 
But I don't want a dot. I want a little fire hanging over my head. That wherever I go, people will know there's a fire in this man. There's an anointing in this man. There's a power in this man. Come on, somebody. God is with this man. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says that they were filled and it was like fire from heaven. In that upper room, they had the friction in the form of opposition. They had oxygen when the Holy Spirit began to breathe on them. But then God needed fuel. And who is the fuel? Who is the fuel? I came to tell you tonight, you're the fuel. <laughs> We've got the friction because some of you are going through opposition right now. Everything's coming against you. And you say, man, it's serving God for me. It seems like nothing around me is working. I got a lot of opposition. Get ready. God's just sparking a fire. Come on, somebody. And then you get into a room like this and you're going through all those trials and all that opposition and all that stuff that's going on in your life. God just rubbing you. He's just doing. Come on, somebody. So I'm just getting them ready. I'm just getting them ready. I know they've been going through it. I know they don't always feel good, but I'm just getting them ready. Then you get in a room like this and then the wind starts to blow. But he's just looking for young people that don't quit. He's looking for young people that will stay in the house of God. Is there any young people in this third wave that says, God, you can light me on fire. You can ignite my vision. You can ignite. Is there anybody? I want you to get louder. I want you to let the devil know that there is an army that God is raising up. I guess that's what I came to tell you today. He's just looking for somebody that he could light on fire. He's just looking for a leader that he can light on fire. He's lighting you on fire tonight. This ministry, Victory Outreach, started with a couple that allowed God to light them on fire. This gang ministry in 1993 started with a young man that allowed God to light him on fire. And now it's your turn. <laughs> now we're not out of it but we're burning under an old fire it's still a good fire it still works get close to it it'll light you up but God wants to start a new fire the third wave fire I wonder what that fire is going to do I wonder what kind of impact that fire is going to make see there are three things that the fire of God will do for this third wave and then I'll let you go tonight. You ready for this? The first thing is that when God lights you on fire the fire will break you away from and shape you for. I know that's a long sentence but that's the best way. I'm going to preach it how God gave it to me. Is that alright? Doesn't make a lot of sense. The fire will break you away from but then shape you for. My question is, what are the things in your life that are trying to hold you back? What are the things in your life that are trying to keep you ineffective? What are the things in your life that keep you under the bondage of stagnancy and keep you diverted from God's plan? If, when the fire hits you, the fire burns all that stuff up. <laughs> You can always tell a leader who has fire and who doesn't. Come on, somebody. Because a leader who has fire has their priorities in order. Because the Holy Spirit is like a pill. I know I shouldn't say that, but this is the best way I could put it. Because some of you were going to go to CVS and try to look for a Holy Spirit pill. <laughs> I'm like, sir, we don't have those. You're going to have to get that in your prayer closet. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit's like a pill filled with many ingredients and when you take a pill it does something to your body it breaks some things down and it builds some things up that's how God gave it to me is that alright it breaks some things down who, who needs something broken down in your life Woo! This boy in my life, break him down, Holy Ghost. 
You're taking me off track. This girl, oh my God, she's the devil in high heels. Break her down. This job that's pulling me away from my calling, break it down. These things that go on in my mind, break it down. See, when you take the pill of the Holy Ghost, the fire handles the things that you can't handle for yourself. It, it, the trials, see, and, and why do we lose some leaders? Because of trials. We lose some leaders. My greatest fear is that the group that's here tonight, he won't be here next year. And we're going to lose some of you. Reality is we're going to lose some of you. I heard someone say this the other day. They said, I got some good news, some bad news. Here's, here's, you want the good news, bad news? Say, bad news. Give me some bad news. Here's bad news is that 90% of the people going to ministry don't last. The good news is you don't have to be a part of the 90%. But <laughs> you must take the pill. Because the pill will break some things down and build some things up. We lose leaders in trials. Leaders break down in trials. But let me tell you something about trials. Who's ever been through trials? Look at me. Trials were not meant to break you. When you're going through a trial, that's what the devil comes and tells you. God's trying to break you. You're, sometimes you hear a pastor, God's trying to break you. You hear leaders, God's trying to break you. You read a book, God, no, that's not the purpose of trials. Trials are not to break you. Trials are to build you. But when the fire of the Holy Ghost hits you, that's what should break you first. I look at these altars sometimes and I see a lot of jumpers. But I don't see a lot of criers. I see a lot of spinners and picture takers. Was oh, that too close to home? You're at the altar taking pictures. You're so busy capturing the moment, you miss it. And what if you, you missed the time that God wanted to break you? What if you missed the time that the pill wanted to take some things out of your life? that the Holy Ghost is trying to take that pride, take that worldly desire, take that ungodly relationship, take that chain off of you. Come on, somebody. And the reason you don't make it through trials is because you don't let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. But not tonight. Tonight, the Holy Ghost is going to be released in this place. Tonight, some of you are going to dive into the fire. You're going to dive into the change. You're... Come on, help me preach us a little bit. Trials don't break you. Trials make you. But the Holy Spirit wants to break you. The Holy Spirit wants to burn some things out of your life. And then when the trials come, the trials teach you how to move in power. Who wants power? You never know if you have power if you're always living on the mountaintop, can I talk to you like leaders? You only know if you have power when you find yourself in the valley. When your pastor disagrees with you. When people disagree with you. When you're not getting what you want. You don't need power when you're getting everything you want, Chava. You don't need power when you're getting everything you want, Julian. But it's when you're not getting what you want and you're not breaking through. That's when the power of God wants to come alive in your leadership. See, we have a generation that thinks charisma is power. <laughs> but God wants to move you from charisma to power. My God, this is good preaching. See, charisma is natural. It's a dangerous thing to do ministry without the power of God. You won't last. And we have a generation that is charismatic and gifted. And charisma is natural. But fire is the result of a life that has been tested and burned. I know some of you are like, oh, God. But leaders like this kind of stuff. 
when, when, a, when a silversmith wants to make a sword, the first thing they do is to take a piece of steel and then they light a fire, a hot fire. Come on now. And they get that fire hot, 1,000 degrees. Then they get that steel. Come on now. And they stick it in the fire. <laughs> That's how some of you feel right now. God lit a fire, took your life, and just stuck you in it. What happens to that steel? That heat softens up that steel. Ooh. Those trials soften up that steel. Make it real red. Sizzling. Melts it. It takes it out. When it's hot, it's soft. Puts it down on a hard surface. He gets a hammer. Start banging that thing. Boom. And because it's soft, because it's pliable, because it's submitted to the fire. The craftsman can do his work. Ooh. And he begins to shape a weapon. Come on, somebody. And that's what God is doing in your life. Through every trial, through every situation, the fire of God is shaping you into a weapon. What kind of weapon do you want to be? Come on, give God a praise. The second thing is that the fire also ignites your passions. The fire, when God lights you on fire, when the Holy Spirit lights you on fire, the, the thing that's going to change in a leader's life is the passions. The fire, when I, when I talk about passions, let me put it this way. The fire is going to change your hunger. When you didn't have the fire, you had a desire to consume things. Come on now. There was things that you desired to consume. A lot of those things got you in trouble. But when the fire hits you, God shifts you away from things you used to consume and gives you a hunger for new things. Come on, somebody. And, and when you weren't saved, you were eating from the enemy's table. But when the fire hits you, it's as if God taps you on the shoulder, says, get up. I don't want you sitting here no more. I want you to come sit at my table. And I want you to taste. Ooh, some of you are hungry. I want you to taste what I can offer you. I want you to taste what real love is. Real joy is. Real vision is. Real fulfillment. Come on, somebody. Am I going too heavy on you? That's why the Bible says Daniel and his disciples, who are a great example of young men that were so on fire that the lions couldn't eat them. And Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, his disciples, when they threw them in the fiery furnace, everybody else was getting burned up. But when they went in there, Jesus showed up and nothing by any means harmed them. The fire inside of them was stronger than the fire on the outside. I'm trying to preach in here. Help me a little bit. Who wants that kind of fire? So the reason Daniel and his disciples had that fire is because when they had the king's table and they said, here, we want everybody, we're preparing these soldiers for the king. We want everybody to eat from this table. Daniel and his disciples, the Bible says they, they came up with another plant because they had a different kind of hunger. They said, you know what? We don't want to eat from the king's table. All the delicacies, all of this lobster, all of this sweets, all of this fine food. Uh, we we want to eat vegetables. That's why some of you women are suffering right now. Blame it on Daniel. Can I hear an amen? We want to eat vegetables. We don't want to eat what the world eats. 
We, we know what we're supposed to eat. God gave us strict dietary laws in the book of Leviticus, and we know we can't eat that stuff. And the Bible says, he said, test us in this, that in 21 days, after we've done all this, come on, somebody, after we've consumed everything from the Lord's table, test us to see who's stronger. So there they were eating their broccoli, eating their carrots, denying themselves, pushing away from the king's table, pushing away from the world, pushing away from what their high school friends were telling them, push away from peer pressure, pushing away from social media, pushing away from YouTube, pushing away from carnal mindsets, pushing away from worldly mentalities, pushing away from anything that harms your body and staying focused and hungry for the Lord. And after 21 days, one version of the Bible says that after they examined Daniel and his disciples, they looked 10 times stronger, 10 times better than the ones that were eating at the king's table. That's what we have here. That's what we're trying to raise up here. That's what this third wave is all about. That's what the fire is going to do. We're going to raise up a generation that's 10 times better, 10 times stronger, 10 times more anointed. 10 times more vision. Come on. I'm talking about you this morning. Your hunger is going to change. Say, David, your hunger is going to change. I'm almost done. When the Holy Spirit hits you, you'll have a hunger for separation and a hunger for sacrifice and then even a deeper hunger, someone say deeper hunger, a hunger to suffer. Depending on how much fire you want. When the Holy Spirit hits you, you'll, you'll quit a job. When the Holy Spirit hits you, you'll, 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 you'll block every number of every girl that ever texted you. Come on, somebody. When, when I got saved, I loved my friends. You know, they were there for me. But they were also getting me in trouble, taking me down the wrong path. Every one of my friends was either dead or in prison. And when I separated and I got hit with that fire, I had to say goodbye to my old lifestyle. I had to say goodbye to my old lifestyle. And when you're hit, with the power of God, you have a desire to separate. That's why young people go to the UTC. It's not for training. It's for separation. They want to get away from their church. All their church friends that are messing around in the pew and texting during service and walking around in the service, going to the bathroom 20 times. And do you like this guy? Do you like that girl? They say, I'm sick of this. I've been hit with the fire. I got to get away from all this stuff. My hunger is changing. My passion is changing. I'm trying to teach you something. Who agrees with me? You have a desire to separate, but then you'll have a desire to sacrifice. We need a generation that won't get too comfortable at home and, and let the devil dumb down their vision. That won't listen to the voices that want you to stay average. Won't submit to the complexes and the fears and the lies of the enemy. Remember when the Holy Spirit hits you, it burns all that stuff up. <laughs> And it builds you up in the area of having a willingness to not only separate, but to sacrifice. That's why you'll see some young people who will sell their car. They'll, 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 they'll leave home. They'll let go of their laptop. They'll make some serious, radical changes in their life because they know that the Lord is calling them deeper. Now, this is where you lose the crowd. You, you have a big crowd, then you have a medium-sized crowd. And then you have a small crowd because when you talk about commitment, people always drop out. So what's your heart telling you to do tonight? Because the fire doesn't fall on dropouts. Woo. And then the next level is to suffer. When I went to Panama, this, I've been there twice in the last two months. 
This is a third wave church. And these are people that are being used by God to build the church there in Panama, and it's doing great. 24 months are already almost at 400 people. There's some churches in America that they've been there for 20 years and haven't been able to reach that goal. And these are third waivers. Someone say third waivers. But I'll tell you, they're over there and they're living together with their children. They're packing into rooms, and sharing bathrooms. Come on, somebody. They don't have a car. They got to get in the van. It's hot. It's, it's like crazy hot over there. And they don't have money. They don't have the luxuries that some of us have. They don't have new pairs of shoes. They don't have church shoes like you got. Then we got five pairs of church shoes. You're like, which shoes am I going to wear to church? They wear the same shoes to church every service. They don't have a nice suit, nice sports coat. Come on, somebody. Because the fire of God has touched their life. And they have been willing to separate, sacrifice, and now even suffer. Look what the Lord has done. We're, we're going to build the ministry through leaders who've been touched by the fire. And you know how our, our youth ministries are going to break through? Because I know that's been the prayer. How, how can we get these youth ministries to break through? I'll tell you how. We need the fire to fall. We need the real Holy Ghost fire to fall down in our services. Instead of playing, I start praying. Come on, somebody. Instead of coming to see your friends, we need to come to see God. What would happen oh, if our hunger shifted? Shipping with people to fellowshipping with the power of God. That's why I come to church. I mean, I like the people, but sometimes like tonight, I, I just, there was a bunch of agreements. I was like, you guys get in. I really... I love you, but I don't want to talk to you right now. I, I, want, to, I want the fire. I got to get into that sanctuary because there's a, there's a fire that's going to be released. There's an anointing, and that's what we need, that kind of expectation. Is this too heavy for you? We need that kind of expectation in our youth services. Let me give you the, the final thing here tonight. Is Number one, the fire will break you away and shape you forward. Number two, the fire will ignite your passions. You're going to have a passion for prayer. You're going to have a passion for God's word. You're going to have a passion to spend time with God. And then the fire is going to fall on you. How many feel like it's already falling on you? Right? It's not everybody because it won't be everybody. It will be some of you. It's just some of you tonight. But the fire will fall on you. Your passions will change. Your desires will change. And then the third thing that happens is that the fire will now make you contagious. <laughs> How does the ministry grow? It's not methods. It's not strategies. It's contagious leadership. <laughs> it's not the books you read and the schools you go to. All that's good. All that's doing is qualifying you before the eyes of, the eyes of men. But what grows in ministry is when you qualify yourself in the eyes of God. When that fire hits you and your passion shifts, boom, and you separate, boom, and you sacrifice and you even suffer, the fire grows. People want to follow you because you're lighting the way. Woo -hoo -hoo. 
See, see how not everybody will clap because not everybody's going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. We don't need everybody. The Bible says one could put a thousand to flight. And two could put 10,000. So we don't need everybody, but we just do need some people that before this weekend is over, you're going to let the Holy Ghost begin to touch you and the fire begin to change you. Oh, my God. And something is shifting inside of you already. Something is changing inside of you already. Some of you are already being filled right now and your wick is being lit and your soul is being lit and something is coming alive in your spirit. You say, I'm not going to be the person I was. God is doing a new work in my life. There is a fire that is stirring up in a leader tonight. There is a fire that is stirring up in a 15-year-old, in a 17-year-old, in an 18-year-old. There's a leader tonight that was dead. Don't say amen, won't clap, won't even smile at the preacher. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead. See, that's my personality. You're dead because when the Holy Spirit hits you, he changes your personality. You think I jump because it looks cool? You think I dress this way because it looks cool? You think I preach this way because it looks cool? No, I've been touched by fire and the fire changed me into a new man. I'm not the man I used to be. I'm not that 19 year old that came in broken and messed up and bound when I was touched by the fire of the Holy Ghost and the man today has been a work of the Holy Ghost. He took me, he put me in the flame, he heated me up, he pounded me, he weaponized me. That's what relationship will do to you. Change you. And it will make you contagious. speaking I'm off my notes now that's why when David sinned he wasn't worried about the people and all that he said take not thy Holy Spirit from me because it's been the Holy Spirit that gave me victory in battle. <laughs> Come on, gang. Come on, third wing. There's a fire that's going to fall here tonight. I said there's a fire that's going to fall here tonight. It's, it's been the anointing that has broken the yoke of bond. It's been the anointing that raised me up. It's been the fire of God that's made me a contagious leader. Come on, somebody. When I was alone in the cave, it was the anointing that brought all the people into the cave with me. And it was there that God raised up an army. Come on, somebody. When the Holy Ghost lights you on fire, you walk into the room, and people are going to want to know your name. Because they're going to say, there's something different about you you to see some of the rooms that I have been walking into this year and last year heavy rooms people I don't know I walk in and people gravitate to me because I don't look like I belong there but then they sense that there's a favor and something on my life and they say there's something different about you what do you do what do you do what is your job why are you here I say I don't know why I'm here but I'll tell you what I do I am a preacher of the gospel and I am unashamed of the power of the Holy Ghost somebody say fire tonight Light all you on fire. That we would have all the leaders we need. Just in this room alone, we can take.
three cities, four cities, five cities. Just with the leaders in this room, we could take Europe. We could take Latin America. We could take Mexico. <laughs> when the fire begins to change your passion. I don't want to be a YouTube star pastor. I want to be a preacher. I don't want to be an Instagram famous person. I want to be a leader. I don't want to own a, a business or a fashion store. I want to be a pastor's wife. I want to be an evangelist. I want to be a missionary because when the fire falls, something begins to change. Something's changing tonight. charisma I'm not the best looking you see the people who are so good looking I'm not that good looking I don't know how to do my makeup I don't know how to wear clothes I don't know how to comb my hair some of the guys I don't like to shave my head all the way up so they don't like me I don't like that line so they don't like me that's fine just take the pill burn up the things that are bad about you and build up the things that are good about you and let the anointing come on if you want the anointing i want to play it on the instruments come on lift up those hands if you're ready for the anointing of god lord we have leaders here tonight that want to be filled with the power that want to be lit on fire let me hear you speak in tongues tonight let me hear you speak in tongues tonight the fire. 
identify the wall tonight. If you're not right with God, this is a time to get right with God. Renounce sin, renounce carnal living, re renounce those behaviors. But the wall is for Christians that have already done that. There's a spirit of depression and defeat trying to hit your life. This generation struggles with depression, anxiety, fear. And the enemy wants to dumb you down. He wants to keep you afraid. He wants to keep you in doubt. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke a spirit of depression in your life. The more you look at that phone, the more depressed you're going to be. The more you compare yourself to people, the more defeated you're going to be. It's time to take your eyes off of man. And it's time to put your eyes on the Lord. So right now, all over this place, that's what I want you to do. Take your eyes off of man. Put your eyes on God. And, and listen to what the Lord says about you. You belong to me. You're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. And I have a plan for you. And I'm going to light you on fire. And I'm going to ignite your life. And I'm going to cause for you to have a contagious life. People are going to want what you have. People are going to desire what you have. There's some people that are really broken at this altar. God is moving. They're going to want what you have. They're going to desire what you have. Because they know that your life is focused on me. So right now, all over this place, 